Well, here we are at another Facebook Live session. Hope you're having a great day. Hope life's going better for you. Um, my office manager wanted me to share her favorite joke, so I have to. What do you call a bull that is lazy? A bulldozer. So that's, that one's on Diane. The other thing I'd like to say is thank you to all those police officers that, although I do not like getting speed, speeding tickets, I appreciate they, when they have my back when there's trouble. And I hope thing, the people in the country start seeing them in a different light. And thanks to all the military people who give us the right to protest. But hopefully we can stop the riots. Okay, today our presentation is on plantar fasciitis. One of my favorite subjects and you can see the areas typically it's the bottom of your heel in the front part there sometimes it spreads in the arch but most commonly right here so as we look at the anatomy you can see you've got the posterior calf muscles that run into the achilles tendon and down into the bottom of the heel and you've got the anterior muscles that run into the front of the foot and help with pulling the foot up and then here's the plantar fascia hooking to the heel bone and going forward into the toes and you got musculature under there as well so we isolate a little bit more this is typically where all the strain is this is where you get the bone spurs or the tearing typically and the inflammation and it's really painful right in this area more to the inside of your heel than the outside and it can spread into here sometimes but typically it's more in this area so just to show you the mechanics of the plantar fascia. So for example, when you're running, it attaches from here into the toe. So as you extend the toe, it tightens up the plantar fascia, which makes the foot firm and gives you a solid push off and you get a more explosive takeoff with running, jumping, etc. Problem is if the toe is not working or if the fascia is inflamed, then you start doing using different body mechanics and you lose that benefit and it can start bothering other areas of the body. Okay, what are the symptoms of plantar fasciitis? Heel pain, again that's on the bottom of your heel and kind of forward a couple inches from the end of your heel. Heel pain when you step down getting out of bed and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Heel pain that eases up after you get up and walk around for a few minutes. So the pain starts to ease up as it stretches out. Heel pain going up and down, especially going upstairs. Pain with running or after running. And heel pain that sometimes moves into the arch of your foot. So again, typically right here is where you're going to feel it more the inside than the outside. And it can spread up in this area. So what are some of the causes? High heels is one cause. So as you can see, if the foot's in this position for a long period during the day, it shortens up the plantar fascia and the Achilles tendon, and you can have problems here, and you can have problems here. So imagine this person been these high heeled shoes for hours, and then they jump into their flip flops or into their running shoes and decide to go for a run. That's a lot of stress on a really shortened soft tissue. Flat feet. So again, the plantar fascia is stretched out. There's no muscular support there. And you can see how it caves the ankles in, which affects ankles, feet, knees, hips, back. So here you go. When you have problems with pronation and flat feet, um, it can cause problems with neck, with the low back the hip, the knee, shin splints, and plantar fasciitis. That's a lot of areas to be affected by one condition. That's why I like working with it, because when you fix it, it fixes a lot of things. So, bad shoes. Again, high heels. Anybody that's coming to my clinic with high heels knows right off the bat I threatened to take a driving club from a golf set and knock the heels out from under the shoes. They're just so bad in so many ways. Not only for shortening up the plantar fascia and the musculature, the Achilles tendon, the pressure puts on the balls of your feet, it throws your hips forward, your back into lordosis. It just it's they're just not good for long periods of time. They make your legs look great, but they're bad for you in every other way. These types of shoes, they're great because they 
don't cost very much money and you can get a color to match all your different outfits but they usually have lousy art support uh, you see a lot of people wearing slippers around uh, just go to the store next time see how many people are wearing slippers and sometimes pajama bottoms and then cute sandals but no support if you wear those a lot that can cause problems I just threw this one in because I was looking for bad shoes and I took me a while to figure out what this was and now I can see your heel would go right up in here and then the balls your feet down in here so it's kind of cool looking but nothing I'd ever recommend and here's the nemesis people wearing these flip-flops They just give no support. Half the time the heels are hanging off the inside of the flip-flop. And if you have any problems with your feet, these are just terrible because they give no support at all. And you know, when I grew up, they used to call these thongs, but now we have to call them flip-flops. So if you ever call me, hear me call it thongs, that's just what they used to be. So here's someone in flip-flops, flat feet, no support. So if they had any problems, this would, this would not help them. The other thing is, when I see people that have shoes that might have good art support, but they don't tie the shoelace, then the uppers don't give you support, and you can see you get caving into the arches, so that can cause problems as well. So if you have shoelace, tie them up. Okay, here's the shoe flex or brake test. This is an easy test you can do before you buy shoes. So lots of times people say, well, what kind of running shoe should I get, or this shoe? Um, should I get the most expensive? I just I usually find mid-range price shoes are great. Sometimes the really expensive shoes look great, but they're lousy design as far as supporting the feet. So on your foot, your arch is up like that, but you bend at the balls of your feet. So that's what your shoe should do. If it bends in the arch, that's not good. So this is what you do. You're looking at your shoes or shoes that you have if you want to test them. Grab it by, turn it upside down, grab it by the heel and the toe, and bend it. If it breaks in the middle of the arch, that's a lousy support. This is good support because it bends at the ball of the foot like your foot naturally does, but it's solid here, so you're going to have good arch support. Weight gain. Now, I'm not going after obese people. This is all of us. I mean, I'm a skinny guy, but I've gained weight with the COVID-19 pandemic not being as active. I've talked about right-handed, left-handed snacks. Every time I walk in the kitchen, I eat something with, grab something with my left. On the way out, I grab with the right. So we've been staying home more. We eat and snack more, and I hear this all the time. More sedentary, and we gain some weight. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Then you start back on your exercise programs with those extra pounds, and it can lead to problems like plantar fasciitis. So you decide, well, it's been a couple months. I'm gaining weight. I need to get out and run. And you go start off what you were doing two months ago. Start running up hills, whatever. And it causes problems. So training errors. Really a problem right now. So you say, I've really got to lose weight. Um, I'm going to go on a trip here. I haven't been exercising. So I'm going to run up hills just to start off and really burn some calories. Boom. Plantar fasciitis starts. Or you decide, I'm going to jump rope. A lot of bouncing on the toes and putting a lot of stress on the muscles and the plantar fascia or you decide I'm gonna go back to CrossFit and they get you doing some box jumps and you can just imagine the force every time you jump down off the box onto the floor and you start something now if you're younger lots of times it'll just be a weekend warrior thing you're sore for a few days and you get past it but as you get older these types of stresses strains or injuries tend to last for months or longer depending on what you do about them or if you keep pushing through it or if you seek help and uh, get it taken care of or it might be something like you said you know what i'm going to go on a backpacking trip you put on that 60 pound backpack and you don't have good art sports in your shoes and you go hiking up the mountain and when you get back you've got sore bottom of your feet pain in front of the hill so all these things um, are typical uh, activities that can cause problems treatment well, one thing is getting good, solid, supportive shoes. I already showed you the shoe brake test. Um, but there's lots of shoes out there, so you can wear cute little sandals in the summer, clogs, day hikers, hikers, 
and different sandals that give you good support. Or you can just add some art supports. And these don't cost much. Lots of times I will recommend a three quarter length art support because then it doesn't fill up the toe box and, and make your feet too tight. But if you've got a pretty good wide toe box in your uh, exercise shoes, then you can go the full length art support. And this is the difference. You can see the foot caved in and caved out. Or, I mean, in normal here. So this is what you're trying to prevent because this puts a lot of strain on that plantar fascia and the medial arch and the heel. So treatment. One thing is stretching of the big toe. So I like to see at least 80 degrees extension in the great toe. Um, when you're running... Um, it goes, it's, lots of times it's more than 70, degree, 70 degrees required to run. So this would be a stiff toe right here. But this is with the foot pointed down. Now look here, they bent the foot back. So this would be like on the foot when you're pushing off. So the ankle's bent, but look, there's no extension there. So what's going to happen with this person is they're going to turn their foot outward, externally rotate it, put more stress on the plantar fascia. It's going to affect the knee because you're rotating it. It's going to affect the hip and this can be a problem. So again, stretching this big toe is really important. Also is checking to see if your toes are the same. So in this kneeling test, you're kneeling down like this and you put your big toe down like that and the ball of the foot should just about touch there. It should touch or at least close to it. And this one it does, there's 70 degrees, but again, sometimes running may require more. In this one, there's only 42 degrees. So if this was the same person, on this foot, they're going to be turning the foot outward, and this foot's going to be straight ahead, and that's going to cause some problems. Again, it could be the foot, plantar fascia, it could be the knees, the hips, the pelvis, um, lots of things. Because when you're running, with each step, if it's 250 to 300% of your body weight, and you're running unequally from side to side, it's like a front and alignment on a car. And the more you run, just like the more you drive the car, the more obvious the problems become. So this is your self-flexibility test. So you just kneel down, put your toe on the ground, and see if the ball of your foot gets close to the ground. And then see if it's the same side to side. And these are stretches. You just, just simply pull that toe back. But also, if you pull the ankle back and see if the toe stays there, then that's, a good, that's an even better stretch. You can do the wall stretch as well. Stretching your calves is huge. So you can do these standing against the wall stretch to get the back of the calf there. Um, when you're doing these runner stretches, you need to do it with the knee straight and bent. And when you do it with it straight, you'll feel it stretching this muscle here. When you do it bent, you'll feel it down into the Achilles tendon and down into this area. The other thing you can do is you can also swing the heel in with this stretch or swing it out and you'll get some other tissue that is often affected with plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis. You can use a strap or a rope or a belt or something. And then the way I like to stretch is on the edge of a stair because I get a better stretch. I do it with my knee straight, I do it with my knee bent, and then I also swing the heel towards the other foot and swing it out. So pigeon toed, duck toed, and it gets different tendons, and that keeps me from having problems. Some people like to roll. Now my feet, when I had this before, I do not like the spiky ball. Some people do. Just a tennis ball works fine. Or you can roll it on a frozen water bottle. That feels nice. And again, these are things to make it feel better. These do not correct the problem. And you can do ice massage with stretching. Just tear the edge of the cup down, just ice massage it right over the sore areas while stretching it, and that can feel really good. Um, Night resting splints. If it's severe, sometimes we'll have you do this or the doctor will have you wear a night resting splint, which keeps your foot and ankle at a 90 degree so that the um, Achilles tendon doesn't shorten up and the plantar fascia doesn't shorten up. And there's different versions of it, but can you imagine trying to sleep with this thing on? This is a better one. This one's kind of bulky. Um, this one, your toes actually get sore if you wore it like that. That would not be comfortable at all. This would be my least favorite. This one would be a pretty good one, not very obstructive. 
But when you sleep at night, the problem is your feet hang down, so this arch shortens up, and then your Achilles tendon shortens up, and guess what? You step down out of bed, and all of a sudden it stretches that tissue, and it is not comfortable. Uh, lots of times after you walk around for a few minutes, it'll start to stretch out and feel better, but that's the problem. So when it's really severe, that's why they have you wear these night resting splints to keep it pre-stretched all night. But what about physical therapy? Physical therapy is great for plantar fascia, fasciitis. It's one of my favorite things to treat. We use A-STEM. We do joint mobilization. We want to make sure there's good mobility in not only the ankle joint, but in the great toe. And we show you specific exercises. So what should you do if you've tried some of the things we've mentioned and they're not working? Use creams, oils, etc. You know, they're not really effective on this condition. It's a degenerative tissue t condition, and they don't, they really don't do a lot. Um, injections, again, um, according to some orthopedic surgeons, and in my experience, they just do not work that well. And there's some fear that injecting the plantar fasciitis might cause a, a risk of a rupture in that plantar fasciitis and make it even worse. And lots of times, if you've had it for a while, it's not really inflammation. It's now become a degenerative condition. And so a cortisone shot would not help that much. Physical therapy and ASTEM. So ASTEM is a treatment that stimulates the regenerative healing process. So we get in there and we go over all the tissue. We don't just get the bottom of the foot. We get the whole lower extremity, the front and back of the calf and thigh, the ankle, and then end up down the bottom of the foot, the great toe. And it, it helps stimulate the healing process to produce good quality tissue instead of that degenerative tissue that you have with chronic plantar fasciitis. Very effective uh, treatment. Here's just a testimonial. The, this patient had done everything the doctor and podiatrist had recommend, recommended and it didn't really resolve it. Then she started having A-STEM treatment and she gradually started getting better in each treatment, started to feel better. In my practice, what I've noticed, usually the third to fourth times when people start to notice the bigger difference and then they start moving ahead more quickly. But the A-STEM coupled with strengthening and stretching uh, resolves plantar fasciitis and then of course making sure the person has good shoes, doing proper training, uh, and it can be very effective. So the fact is, plantar fasciitis is one of those conditions that can really interfere with an active lifestyle. The longer you ignore it, the worse it gets, the more degenerative tissue develops, making it more difficult to fix. So this is one of those things, if you just keep beating it to death, it's just going to take longer to fix it. But it is something that can be fixed. So if you have it, the quicker we get on it, the better. And again, physical therapy is great for plantar fasciitis. So call your doctor, get a prescription. Let's get you back, get you in here and get you back to an active lifestyle. If you're not sure that's what you got, remember, we want to get you happy feet. So if you're not sure, give us a call. 801-476-2000. We can check it out real quickly. Um, if you don't want to come in, you can just email your question to either fromney at physical.com or jelzy.physical at gmail.com, and we'll see what we can do to answer your question. So, if you know somebody that's been complaining about this kind of problem, they're not running as much, when they do run, they're always hurting, or they get out of bed, and they just do not like um, when they first step down on it, um, have them watch this. Um, go to the Physical Therapy and Balance Center on Facebook and have them watch this and it might give them some ideas and if not, then they can, uh, let's get them in here and, and give them the help that they need. This is something you don't have to suffer suffer with. Uh, you can also follow us on our Instagram page at physical.therapy.oac and uh, we'll have some posts on plantar fasciitis this coming week that uh, should be helpful as well. So, if you enjoy these Facebook Live presentations, you'd like us to do one on a specific topic, uh, email us and we'll see what we can do to meet your needs. Um, but again, sh spread the word. We do these to help people, especially nowadays where people don't want to come in that much. But if you need help, we've been running our clinic here through the entire 
COVID pandemic, we haven't had a single problem with any of our patients and they are getting better while you are sitting at home being miserable. So uh, let's get you taken care of. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and hope you have a great day.